best light show in town on WCCO 4 News at 10. Good to see you again tonight. I'm Amelia Santanello. And I'm Don Shelby. Enjoy the peace and quiet of this night because we're getting ready for another round of snow. And again, it is supposed to come just in time for tomorrow's evening commute. It's tough to forget last night. We heard stories of half-hour drives home becoming three-hour ordeals. Jason DeRussia wondered if last night was a fluke or a mess we have to get used to. Pretty much the whole roads were covered with snow. Tonight, it took Brandon Christensen 10 minutes to get from work to his home near Lake Nokomis. Last night, five times that. I don't know if there's more people or if it's just a uh, first snowfall of the season. We wanted to know the same thing. Sitting in traffic for three hours yesterday gives a man time to think. This is not a good day. So first, let's blow the whistle on the weird stuff. Half the Minneapolis traffic cops were writing tickets because of the snow emergency instead of helping things move downtown. People escaping the interstates clogged the roads with people who have to avoid the 35W bridge. And then there were you people, the drivers. The biggest problem, of course, is people pulling into the intersections, people pulling into the box. That caused gridlock, but there are bigger issues. There is more traffic down here than there was 10 years ago. Um, and also another thing is I think it's a different kind of traffic. We have a downtown residential community, so they're coming in as much as going out. And since 1985, there's about an extra million cars registered to Minnesota drivers. Research shows a huge increase in people driving during the rush hours. It's up 26% in 10 years. But there's only been an 8% increase in lanes, new roads. As for Brandon, he plans on leaving work late tomorrow to avoid the mess. I like the snow if I don't have to go anywhere. <laughs> Uh, we all like that kind of snow. I talked with a MnDOT spokesman who also drives a snow plow. He told me that he actually thinks things on the highways are better now than they were a decade ago. There's more plows or better at it. Uh, he said he remembers about 12 years ago that traffic would be backed up when snow came down at a rush hour from Minneapolis all the way to Lakeville. So we didn't have that last night at least. No, we didn't. Now, Jason, can you explain to us a little more about drivers who pull into the intersection because that is extremely irritating. Drives you nuts if you try to do the right thing. Sometimes people lay on the horn at you. Uh, right now we've got a red light here at this intersection. Sometimes people when the light turns yellow will try to rush through it. Then they get stuck right in the middle of the street, nowhere to go. And that causes kind of a ripple effect. City of Minneapolis is really urging people to not do that and just wait at the lights when the snow comes tomorrow. Hopefully everybody's listening and will pay attention. All right, Jason, thank you. Well, it wasn't just cars having a tough time last night. Metro Transit buses came to a standstill, too. Spokesperson tells us that at 4 o'clock yesterday, 60% of its buses were running an average of just seven minutes late. Not too bad. But by 6.30, 80% of the fleet was 45 minutes behind. But all of the downtown is gridlocked. Those buses just don't have anywhere to go either. Let's go to Paul Douglas now in the Weather Center. And I think you said just a moment ago that it won't be as bad as we thought. Old Man Winter is going to show a little well-timed mercy tomorrow, Don. It is not going to be as bad as Tuesday. I can't imagine it being that bad. I hesitate calling this a storm, more of a snow event. The brunt of the moisture, the bulk of the snow sliding off to our south. Getting off to work or school, it may still be dry. The flurries, the light snow holding off till midday. Temperatures starting off cold enough, 17 degrees. Flurries possible mid-morning. The light snow likely by lunchtime. And then it gets a little steadier and heavier by afternoon. 3 o'clock, half an inch, maybe an inch by 6 o'clock rush. And by 9 o'clock, an inch and a half. I'm thinking 1 to 2 here. Just to the south, though, it could be as much as 3 to 4, Don. We're giving the uh, commute a hassle factor of three, somewhere between a three and a four. So things have improved a little bit since earlier today. Yeah, what was yesterday, a nine? Yeah, about that. <laughs> okay, thank you, Paul. To check out the forecast 24-7, head to WCCO.com slash weather. Just type in your zip code for real-time conditions. A worker trying to get ice and snow off our state's tallest building fell to his death today. A lady screamed. A couple of people screamed. It's very sad. My prayers go out to his family. 52-year-old Fidel Danilo Sanchez Flores landed in the crystal court of the IDS around 2 o'clock this afternoon. He had been clearing ice off the courtyard's glass roof when he slipped and crashed into the building. He dropped about six stories to the atrium below. 
Now this picture, that one right there, shows how the crystal court roof is laid out. You can see that it's kind of like steps there. The worker apparently fell off one level onto another and then broke through the glass. We're not sure if this is the area of the roof where the accident actually happened. A busy mall turned into a crime scene today in Nebraska when a man opened fire on shoppers. He killed eight people in an Omaha Von Mar store before committing suicide. Windows say that the gunman stood on a third floor balcony and fired down on shoppers. Police found him dead on that third floor. Investigators say the shooter is 20 years old and his mom apparently found a suicide note today that said that he wanted to, quote, go out in style. Tonight, almost a quarter of a million Minnesotans who've given blood are being told to keep a close eye on their financial accounts. That's because someone stole a laptop computer with 268,000 names and social security numbers stored inside. It happened last week before a blood drive in Minneapolis. Memorial Blood Center says the numbers in the laptop are protected by more than one password. And there's no evidence the thief is trying to access private information. Still, government experts say when personal information is compromised like this, you may want to file a complaint with the Federal Trade Commission. To do that, head to our website at wccocom slash links. A Minnesota Department of Transportation emergency manager fired for stealing from the state wants her job back. Sonia Pitt is accused of billing at least $26,000 in unauthorized expenses and improper pay. MnDOT fired her last month for that and because she stayed on the East Coast for two weeks after the 35W bridge collapse didn't come back. Through her lawyer, Pitt says MnDOT misconstrued state travel and expense policies and ignored evidence that would have cleared her. An arbitrator will now look at this case. When told about Pitt's appeal, Governor Tim Pawlenty said, quote, good luck. Tonight, preliminary tests for dangerous vapors inside schools in Minneapolis suburbs show there is nothing to worry about. Pollution experts looked at St. Louis Park High and Park Spanish Immersion School after nearby soil tests found chemicals in the groundwater. Health leaders worried those chemicals could seep into homes and buildings in the area. They're testing a total of 270, but wanted to start with the two schools. The results back today show there is nothing bad in the air, and homes nearby will be tested soon. The Minnesota Pollution Control Agency is holding meetings next week to talk about the process. To know more about the meetings, just go to WCCO.com slash links. The season of giving is in full swing, but for those going through hard financial times, it can be tough, especially if you're a child. So tonight, a group of Roseville police officers came to the rescue. They took 15 kids out to shop, and the cops helped buy presents for family members, and Darcy Pollen shows us the children got more from the experience than just the gifts. They came with a mission. Who do we want to start shop for first? Uh, my mom. She okay. wanted Armed only with a shopping cart, they attack the Target store aisles. She feels the pressure. Some have a plan of action. Just came with the list. Others don't have a clue. I'm just winging it, as they say. Should we just kind of start walking through toys and maybe if something catches your eye? Sure. Okay. But all these children have one goal in common, to make Christmas merrier for their loved ones. You have a good feeling giving them presents, like, because I wouldn't be able to spend money on them otherwise. It makes me feel really good, because I get to buy stuff for people who don't afford that much. Each child gets $145 to spend. Roseville businesses, city workers, and residents donated more than $2,000 to help pay for the gifts. We're very happy and thankful that we had this. I am very fortunate because I have a roof over my head and I have a family that loves me, but just my family's going through a rough time right now. The kids also choose a gift for themselves. I only got a little stuff, like to spend more on my sister, my brother, and my mom. These youngsters may be facing financial hardship, but this experience shows they're rich in the true spirit of the holiday. Christmas is what you make it, regardless of what you get, but it will certainly bring smiles on some people's faces. And Darcy says after the shopping spree, the kids went back to the police station where the officers helped them wrap the gifts and then treated them to a pizza party. Wow. That fun? Yeah. Tonight, a Minnesota man unveiled his way of brightening our lives during the holidays. Yeah, take a look at this.
Troy Lickin made a computer program to sync those 40,000 lights to music. The show runs every night from 5 until 10. Just drive up and turn on the radio. And Troy has posted the station on a sign in his yard. His house is on the corner of 32nd Street and 41st Avenue in South Minneapolis. And we have posted a map at links and numbers on WCCO.com. And Jason has also blogged about this. I think it's a genius to do stuff I like know, that. I know, really. And I guess we, we covered this last year, yeah. and we switched the lights over. Two LED, LED. energy efficient mm -hmm. lights. He said the other lights he was using kept blowing fuses in his house. Yeah, I so. believe that. That's true. <laughs> Winter means holiday light displays like that, and it seems the flu. But is the weather actually making us sick? That's a good question. Plus, presidential hopefuls trying to get their messages across. What buzzwords are they leaning on? A new program that tracks what words candidates use most. That's ahead in Reality Check. Turn on the Twin Cities official Christmas music station right now. 102.9 Light FM. The number one movie in the world. Hold on! is now the number one selling DVD. Fire. Pirates at World's End. Only today on 2 Disc DVD. Get it before it's gone. Great gift ideas for the do-it-yourselfer on your list at Menards. Irwin Quick Grip Bar Clamps are perfect when you need an extra hand. When you buy one of these 6-inch Quick Grip Clamps, you get a second free. The XPR Rotary Kit from Dremel is the perfect gift. It includes over 50 accessories and includes a carrying case, just $64.99 after rebate. Plus, there are zero payments and no interest for six months when you use your big card. Boy, season's greetings to you all from the night. Gillette Children's is changing the way Michael sees the world, and the world sees Michael. Birthday Bucks is back on 94.5 KS95. Thursday's the day KS95 gives away $10,000 to one lucky listener just for having a birthday. Listen at 7.20 a.m. Someone will win KS95's Birthday Bucks, worth $10,000. Meet Adia from St. Paul. She's been embracing new cultures and asked Cub to bring foods from all over the world to her table. So we gave her a $100 gift card and a tour of our global market. She was so excited by the selection of exotic foods, she was inspired to offer an exotic thank you. Call for your chance to win $100 in free food. Cub, bringing more to your table. Countless little choices. Among mountains of megapixels and a gaggle of gigabytes. Shouldn't you spend less time sifting through the nonsense and go straight to the happy ending? Tis the season for spreading cheer and germs. Every winter, it seems, the blue bug bites. Doctors usually say we help it along by avoiding the cold and spending more time together indoors. But some scientists wondered, is the weather actually making us sick? Good question. Here's Ben Tracy. Well, what time of year does the flu normally strike? I'd say right about now, the beginning of winter. It's that time of the season. It is beginning to look a lot <coughs> like flu season. Why do you think the flu tends to spread this time of year? I think people are kind of unsafe with their with germs. People standing outside without their jackets on. I don't think that we really know the answer to that. Mary Ellen Bennett runs the infection control program at HCMC. What do we know about how the flu spreads from person to person? Well, influenza is spread by droplets coming from the, the nose and the mouth. It can travel quite a distance, three feet or more. There might be some in the air right now. Yeah. Cover up. <laughs> <laughs> what have we known um, as to why we get the flu outbreak in the wintertime? Well, I think we've always felt that it's because people are closer together and we're not uh, uh, 
uh, out in the open quite as much. A lot of people getting inside, just staying inside in close quarters. It's a big, big swap of germs, basically. <laughs> That's lovely. Yeah. But this new study debunks the close quarters theory and says the reason we get the flu in the winter is because cooler air allows the virus to spread more effectively. The virus likes cold air, apparently. Yeah. Yeah, well, that makes sense. Researchers found that flu transmission is best at 41 degrees with about 20% humidity. As the conditions get warmer and more humid, the virus particles drop to the ground rather than moving through the air and into our lungs. Really? I guess I had no idea. In fact, historians believe the word influenza comes from the Italian phrase influenza de freddo, which means influence of the cold. I don't know if we can do anything to change the weather, but maybe we can um, th think about that and develop some new ideas as far as prevention methods. But this works out really nice. Yeah. That's good. You can so. cover up. Keep the flu out. Ben says a study also found that once temperatures hit 86 degrees, the flu doesn't spread at all. Same thing when the humidity reaches 80 percent. Of course, the best way to avoid the flu, the same thing your mom taught you, cover your cough and wash your hands. Learn more about staying healthy this winter on our website. The health department's best advice is at WCCO.com slash good question. For the first time in 15 years, our country's teenage birth rate is up. Last year, about 42 in every 1,000 teenagers had a baby. That's up about 3% from the year before. United States health officials say that this could be a statistical blip. But some experts say that teaching kids about abstinence, not birth control methods, is behind the increase. During campaign season, politicians are, I have to tell you this, a lot of talk. Read my lips. The words they're using are no accident. So we took two recent presidential debates and put them through a computer program. It adds up who says what and cranks out a picture of their popular phrases. That image is called a tag cloud. The most common words appear biggest on the screen. So tonight, Pat Kessler reads between the candidates' lines and reality check. We've taken two recent debates and the answers from all of the presidential candidates. And we found that the words they use reveal the candidate codes of their campaigns. The people who we're against are not going to be giving up without a fight. Democrat Hillary Clinton is a good example. When we tag cloud her answers, the words she emphasizes the most are larger and in bolder type. People, president, important, health, Bush. There's a different tag cloud for Republican Rudolph Giuliani. To allow those illegal immigrants who were the victims of crime to report the person who assaulted them. The former New York mayor emphasizes security issues. Giuliani's tag cloud reveals the words New York City, crime, illegal immigrants, people, states. All of the candidates use some words more than others. People, American, president. What the American people are looking for right now is straight answers to tough questions. Democratic Senator Obama's tag cloud emphasizes certain common words, but especially the words health care, workers, and Iraq, the focus of his campaign. But I did do a number of tax cuts that helped a lot of people. For Republican former Governor Mike Huckabee, the words he uses most are believe, people, veterans, and tax. Huckabee, for example, says he wants to abolish the IRS. This is really not scientific. It's just another interesting tool to help us visualize what the politicians say and what they really mean. That's Reality Check. Thank you, Pat. And you can see each of the candidates' tag clouds at WCCO.com slash reality check. Ran the same computer program on Paul, and, and the word he used most over the last three days was yikes. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, a lot of pointing. <laughs> I have something to point to now in the weather department. After a, a fairly quiet November, we're making up for lost time and lost snow. Hope you're enjoying autumn. On paper, winter still technically 16 days away, although if you look at the 90 coldest days of the year historically, winter really began, meteorological winter began, back on the first day of December. According to Pete Bollet at the State Climatology Office, the most snow statewide this early since 96, 1996. By the way, that winter we had 74 inches of snow in the Twin Cities. It got down to minus 18 in the metro 
in January. Here's how much is on the ground. The snow has settled. It's compacted in recent days, and that's why officially the metro has about five to six inches, upwards of 10 up north. Advisories in effect near uh, the Iowa line, and I do expect some advisories in southern Minnesota. We've updated this and adjusted this. A coating maybe half an inch north metro, one to two for many of us, maybe three or four inches south of Northfield. We're north of Southfield, yeah, south of Northfield. Three degrees out there right now officially at the airport, minus three. My weather spotter, Doug Williams, in lovely Orono. It is five below right now, Crystal. Nine below Buffalo, 11 below Princeton. Coldest night, crystal clear skies under this big fair weather high. This next clipper doesn't have nearly as much moisture as the one did on Tuesday. And look at this, most of the moisture slides off just to our south. We just get grazed, clipped. And the result is going to be just a little bit of snow, but it doesn't take much to wreak havoc. 23 for a high. You can see the heaviest bands of snow setting up south of the Minnesota River. Zero tonight. We're close already. 23 tomorrow. Light snow. An inch or two. Compared to Tuesday, it should be a lot better than maybe another one to three on Saturday. Right. Sunday, the better day for power shopping, Amelia, getting out and playing in the snow. Sledding, yes. There you go. All right. That sounds good. Thank you, Paul. Okay. Well, it may not feel like it tonight, but more and more Americans believe that global warming is the real thing. There are still people who believe it's all a big hoax. Tonight, Don says, in Minnesota, the movers and shakers aren't acting like it's a joke. The movers and shakers are aligned as the Minnesota Climate Change Advisory Group. They met in conference today. There are the usual suspects, environmentalists, climate scientists, advocates for change. Then there are the folks you might not expect, like the Minnesota Department of Commerce. And then the people you have been led to believe would have nothing to do with a belief in global warming. Representatives of big utility companies, Northwest Airlines, 3M, and the Minnesota Chamber of Commerce, and about 50 other stakeholders, many of whom know that fixing global warming will cost money. They want to protect their customers and their businesses, as they should. What is missing from the working group trying to reach solutions that make sense is any question about whether global warming is real. The smartest, most successful people in Minnesota are taking it all very seriously. One day, I'm afraid, the disbelievers will owe these people a debt of gratitude. From our family to yours. No, not yet, Miss Trumpeter. This portion of WCCO4 News is brought to you by Ashley Furniture Home Stores. I'm unique. I'm Ashley. For a limited time only, Ashley Furniture Home Store is having the National Bonus Bucks event. When you spend $500, get 50 bonus bucks. Spend $1,000 and get 100 bonus bucks. Spend $2,000 and get 200 bonus bucks. Spend $2,500 or more and get 250 bonus bucks. Save big with no payment, same as cash till June 2009. And our exclusive Ashley Direct prices. Get more bang for your buck right now at your Ashley Furniture Home Store. You're going to love this place. It's Mills Fleet Farms Founders Day Sale. Get everything you'll need now and save big right before the holidays. We've got a great selection of kitchen appliances on sale just in time for holiday cooking. Choose from toasters, a roaster oven, or a food chopper for just $16.99 each. For just $24.99 each, you can select your choice of these appliances, including a big 16-quart rival roaster oven. The timing and the savings couldn't be better. The Founders Day Sale, on now at Mills Fleet Farm. Inside every dressing room at Albertville Premium Outlets, someone is doing their own personal victory dance. 100 fabulous outlet stores. Savings of 25 to 65% every day. Albertville Premium Outlets. Discover pure shopping bliss. From exclusive DeKalb genetics come strong roots that lock firmly into the ground and stalks that stand tall right through harvest. For better standability and higher yield potential. Strong roots, strong stalks, strong yields. 
three solid reasons why more farmers are planting more DeKalb. Halloween party? Bizarre ritualistic cult? Social science experiment? Nah, just another game at the barn. This is Big Ten country. And this is where it lives. With more Golden Gopher games than anyone else, the Big Ten Network is your ultimate source for Minnesota basketball. Go Gophers! Tomorrow morning, I'm tracking more snow. We'll get you through our latest winter blast. Plus, how you can celebrate Christmas with the Klingons. The Metro Minutes at 620. The Wild playing some strangers tonight. Someone they haven't seen in a while. Yeah, in, the, in the day, we used to call them the Broad Street Bullies. Oh, Back okay. in Philly. You remember those days, <laughs> don't you, Amelia? Of course you don't. It's easy to forget there is another conference in the National Hockey League. The Wild face the Philadelphia Flyers of the East for the first time in two years tonight at the X. The Wild had a horrible first period. Goalie Nicholas Baxter here lost sight of the puck. Watch what happens. Knocked it in his own net. That's the way the entire period went. The Wild got into gear here in the second period as Pavel Dimitra scored his first goal in over a month. He had missed nine games during that stretch. Two to one. The Wild, though, just went one for eight in the power play. That was a story. Look at this goal. Oh! It's the insurance goal that stunned Backstrom and everyone in the arena. Braden Coburn let her fly from outside the blue line right over Backstrom's glove, and as they say, nothing but net. The three to one loss ends the Wild's four game winning streak. They hit the road starting in Detroit on Friday night. Well, the Vikings have been riding high with three straight wins, heading to San Francisco as hefty nine point favorites this weekend, but had some cold water thrown on them today with the news that defensive end Ray Edwards has been suspended for four games for violating the NFL's policy of steroid use. Edwards has emerged as a solid starter in his second year out of Purdue with 41 tackles and four sacks, but he'll be gone for the rest of the regular season. And with Erasmus James hobbled by knee issues again, it appears Jamie Mitchell and Brian Robinson will split the defensive end spot vacated by Edwards. Obviously, you know, a lot of those younger guys like Jamie and myself, we have to step up and make sure that that, you know, when we fill in that there's no drop off that, you know, it's just like if Ray was there. And uh, so that's what we're going to do this week. Well, it's starting to look like baseball's winter meetings will end tomorrow with Johan Santana still on the Twins roster. Now, that doesn't mean he'll start the season with the Twins, but new GM Billy Smith is not about to panic and make a deal that he isn't absolutely happy with. Boston, still the front runner, but without the Yankees pushing, under no pressure to get the deal done quickly, which leaves manager Ron Gardenhire watching and waiting. Uh, uh, he's still my pitcher, and worst case scenario for me is if uh, uh, nothing happens, then he starts for me, and I, I, I can't complain about that. So. Uh, all kinds of talk and all kinds of this and that, but nothing's happened. <laughs> Meanwhile, suddenly the Packers have a problem with a quarterback injury. And I'm not talking about the one Brett Favre suffered. What happened and who's affected? Coming up next. This portion of WCCO4 News is brought to you by Grand Casino. Dear Grand Casino, we're like two teenagers sneaking out of our parents' house. Except we're the parents. Our children live next door and don't think we should go out late. Most Fridays, we let them think we're turning in early and head to Grand Casino. We know we'll get caught eventually, but that's okay. We're the Lubies, and that's our Grand Casino story. Oh, geez, we're so busted. Hope we don't get grounded. The Mille Lacs Band of Ojibwe welcomes you. It's the top of the hour. Time for headlines. Soybean numbers are in, and talk surrounds this year's yield leader. Ag reporter Brett Lowry tells us that NK brand soybeans are winning most of the yield trials out there. Local growers tell me NK beans are outperforming others by up to 15 bushels, with some plots exceeding 70 bushels. These beans are going fast, and growers should see their Garst Golden Harvester NK dealer today. In sports, last night... Shouldn't you two be back home figuring out your Medicare information? <laughs> We're with UCARE. Find out why thousands of Minnesotans have made the switch to UCARE for seniors. We've cut through the complications of Medicare for you with affordable plans that cover the things most important to you, even when you travel. To find out more, call 1-877-523-1518. UCARE, healthcare that starts with you. 
During this magical time of year, CircuitCity.com makes shopping simpler with thousands of customer reviews and product comparisons, plus technical support from Circuit City's FireDog. Because nowadays, remembering that the batteries are not included just isn't enough. Simple to shop, buy, and enjoy. Circuit City, simplicity guaranteed. It's Ford's year-end celebration, our biggest event, with the best offers of the year on all Ford SUVs, like Expedition, with an all-new reverse camera system, Escape, and Escape Hybrid, the most fuel-efficient SUV on Earth, and Explorer, with a class-exclusive powerful third-row seat. Now you can lease a 2008 Escape for just $208 a month during Ford's year-end celebration. Visit your Northland Ford dealer or go to NorthlandFord.com. Brett Favre hit the canvas hard in his last game against Dallas and is still recovering from elbow and shoulder injuries, although he will start, as always, against Oakland on Sunday. At least he practiced today. Favre didn't do much, but you know he's going to be ready. His backup, though, Aaron Rodgers, could be out for two weeks after hurting his hamstring on the last play of practice yesterday. That means Craig Nall will back up Favre. He took all the reps passing the ball today. That's a lot to consume, considering he was just re-signed by Green Bay to hang out just in case of an emergency. Yeah, I'll come in here with the expectations of uh, being told, hey, you need to come in here and help Brett hunt a little bit because the guys that he's hunting with aren't very good at it. But, <laughs> <laughs> to taking all the reps today. But, um, <clears throat> you know, it, it, I just have to do what I have to do. And that's hopefully just hold a clipboard <laughs> and, and be Brett Favre's hunting partner this weekend before the game on Sunday. Maybe not play on Sunday. He doesn't really want to do that. Yeah, I thought he was the guy in charge of wearing your hat backwards. <laughs> that's what I thought he, he did. He doubles that. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> Thanks, Rosie. All right, start thinking of all of the jokes. Police in a high-speed chase trying to catch a donut truck. <laughs> That's next. This season, why not give your home a gift? Like this Lindsay sofa for just $3.99, plus lots of other gift ideas under $100. This year, give your home a gift with holiday savings from Home Furniture. Think Honda for the holidays. It's Happy Honda Days. If you're looking for a sleigh that will take you anywhere and everywhere, hurry to the year-end clearance event at your Twin Cities Honda dealers, where an 08 Pilot VP Honda's four-wheel drive luxury SUV is just $299 a month, and where that same $299 a month puts you in a rugged 08 Ridgeline RT pickup. Unwrap big savings on every Honda in stock during the year-end clearance event at your five Twin Cities Honda dealers. If you have small kids at home like I do, Picking up a quick meal shouldn't mean sacrificing quality and nutrition. That's why our delis use only the freshest, all-natural ingredients. That's fresh thinking. That's Kowalski's. Step two. Whatever steps you're taking to impress your partner. Don't let erectile dysfunction get in the way. America's most prescribed ED treatment can help you enjoy a more satisfying sexual experience. To learn more, take a spin around Viagra.com. Ask your doctor if your heart is healthy enough for sex. Don't take Viagra if you take nitrates for chest pain as it may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Side effects may include headache, flushing, upset stomach, and abnormal vision. To avoid long-term injury, seek immediate medical help for an erection lasting more than four hours. Stop taking Viagra and call your doctor right away if you experience a sudden decrease in vision or hearing. Now's the time to take the lead. Ask your doctor if Viagra is right for you. Ode to the Subway Double Stack Steak and Cheese. The only thing better than tasty steak and cheese is tasty steak and cheese with more tasty steak and cheese on top of it. A double dose of deliciousness on freshly baked bread. Subway. Eat fresh. For the area's largest selection and savings you've got to see to believe, I've got two pieces of advice. One, come to Homeworld Rugs. And two, You'd better step on it. World Rugs at all home furniture stores. Finally tonight, a late night snack run that could lead to serious prison time. Instead of buying a box of Krispy Kreme donuts, the suspected drunk driver in Madison, Wisconsin, just took the whole truck. And he didn't shut the back. So as you can see, Ooh. donuts were flying all over the place. Listen, the guy finally stopped. Eh, eh, see what happened there? But he backed right into a squad car. 
Then he takes off again. <sighs> yeah, police really threw the book at him. They got mad because he kept running over all those donuts. They were really mad about that. <laughs> We'll let that pass because we know patty, you're tired. Had a patty we wagon in the you're... bag and you're picking up all the donuts. <laughs> to go. Thanks for joining us, everyone. David Letterman is next. Have a good night. Good night. <laughs> Our writers are on strike still. <laughs>